I started this channel with the intent of sharing with all of you the hobbies that I enjoy, be it craft beer or PC hardware or anything else that I might find interesting. But to keep content fresh, sometimes you have to mix it up along the way. Welcome back to Craft Computing. As always, I'm Jeff. In my last video, I ran you through a FreeNAS installation on pretty much whatever hardware you had laying around, although in my case, I used a Chinese X79 motherboard from Biang and an E5 2650 eight core CPU. If you wanna check out that video, I'll link it right up there. So this is gonna be part two of this series. I'm gonna walk you through getting Plex set up on your FreeNAS box. Now, Plex is actually really simple to install on FreeNAS. There's a plugin built directly in. I'll show you how to install the plugin, how to set up your storage, and then how to get online with Plex. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's do this. All right, so to start out, we're gonna open a web browser and go to your FreeNAS box. Uh, I'm gonna enter the IP address that I entered yesterday and it should pop right up. There we go, and I'm already logged in. From this page, we're gonna go over to the Plugins tab and let that load up. And once it's up, we're gonna go down to Plex Media Server and double click it to install. And are you sure you want to install Plex Media Server? Yes, that's why I double clicked it. So once Plex has been successfully installed, uh, you need to tell it what IP address you want it to be at. By default, it's just gonna grab the first available one in your network, which is not always the best thing. Uh, that may be a DHCP conflict on your network, depending on your setup. Uh, so if you go over here to Jails, uh, you have your Plex Media Server, and this is the IP address that it was given. I'm gonna double click on that, and I'm gonna give it 10.0.1.6, which is the address that I want it to use. I'm gonna hit Save. Once you've changed the IP address for Plex, uh, you're gonna need to restart the service. So to do that, go over to your Plugins tab, go to your Installed Plugins, and right here is the service on and off. So turn that off and then turn it back on and Plex should boot up with the new IP address. All right, once your free NAS box has rebooted, uh, we're gonna make sure that your IP change actually took effect. So we're gonna go back over to the Jails tab and we're gonna check that Plex Media Server is at the IP address that you gave it. Next, we need to tell Plex where your media files are actually located. I'm gonna show you where mine are located at and uh, you can point Plex at uh, your own directory. So here we see the uh, storage drive that I created yesterday on FreeNAS. Uh, and inside of that directory, I have a services folder. And inside of that, I have a Plex media folder. This is actually where all of my Plex files are located. So inside of the Plex media folder, I have a couple of different subdirectories. I have a music subdirectory and a video subdirectory. Um, pretty self-explanatory there. Inside of my videos directory, I've broken it down further by media type. Uh, that's TV shows or movies or uh, even subsections of movies. Uh, so I've got kids movies and holiday movies so I don't have to stare at those all the time as well as uh, stand-up DVDs that I've uh, copied off. Um, Anyway, this is how I break down my Plex library, and I'm gonna show you how to add these directories in just a second. Next up, we're gonna to go to storage, and this is where you're actually gonna tell Plex where your directories are at that are storing your, your media files. So we're gonna click on add storage, and we're gonna add a Plex media server, or add a jail for Plex media server. Your source is wherever you are keeping your files or wherever you're going to be keeping your files. In my case, uh, under my RAID 5, I'm currently doing a restore in the background. You can probably see PowerShell cranking away there. Uh, my files are under storage slash services slash Plex Media. And right here under destination, you're gonna type in a forward slash, media, all lowercase, another forward slash, and whatever you want to name your media server. Uh, in my case, I'm just gonna go Plex Media again, again for consistency. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now I've added a directory that is browsable by my Plex Media server. I'm gonna go over to plugins and I'm going to restart Plex. So it will actually take effect just by toggling it off and back on there. And once that's done, I'm gonna open up Plex Media server by going over to the left on plugins, clicking on Plex and clicking here to launch. Now I've already logged in. Some of you may see a wizard that pops up here that basically asks you to log into Plex, uh, name your server, and then add a library. Uh, I've already logged in and added uh, a name to my server. At this point, I'm just gonna add a library. So if I click there, 
I'm gonna add movies and my kids movies are what's copying right now. So I'm gonna go kids movies and hit next. I'm gonna browse for a folder. Now right here is where I'm gonna type that uh, directory that I typed in earlier, which is the slash media slash plex media. So I'm gonna go slash media all lowercase slash plex media. And in my case, I have subdirectories, so videos are under a subdirectory, and then kids movies are, uh, are a subdirectory. Uh, keeps the kids movies out of uh, the not kid movies. I'm gonna hit add, and I'm gonna hit go. And right there, scans all my movies, automatically starts adding them to the library. And just repeat that same process for each library you have. So I've got TV shows, I've got my stand-up broken out into another directory, uh, my music is in another directory, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, very, very simple. And then once you have added all your libraries, you can access your Plex server from any web browser that you have in your house. Uh, just type in the IP address of the server. You'll put a colon to specify a port and Plex by default connects at port 32400 forward slash web, and that will take you to the Plex main page. And if you have smart TVs or other devices like Roku's or things like that, uh, Plex will automatically be detected on your network by those devices. You should just be able to log right in and off you go. And back over to the PC side one last time. To add media to your Plex server, all you have to do is literally drag and drop into the appropriate subdirectories. So let's say I was adding a kid's movie. Just open your kid's movie subdirectory, drag the movie in there, and Plex will automatically add it when the change is detected. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this Plex setup tutorial for FreeNAS. Uh, it's a lot simpler than you might imagine, and it's actually a lot simpler than setting it up on like your gaming rig or anything else like that. You can set the server in another room. You can have it nice and quiet. You don't have to listen to those hard drives spinning up all the time. Uh, there's a lot of advantages to doing that. Plus, it's not taking any resources away from your gaming rig. If you game on your rig and you have a significant other who wants to watch a movie or whatever else. So let me know down in the comments if this tutorial was helpful for you at all, if you run Plex at home or FreeNAS, or if you're following along and trying to do the same thing that I'm showing you in the tutorials. I really want to hear what your guys' home setups are so I can kind of gear more content directly towards you. And again, I'm going to announce I am now on Patreon, and part of the Patreon reward program is you get access to my Discord chat. That is a direct chat with myself as well as all of the hosts from Talking Heads. That's uh, John, Steve, and Rhett. Uh, we're a friendly group of guys. We can give advice. We like to chat about anything geeky. We love to chat about beer. So if you guys are into that, you guys want to talk to us a little bit more directly, uh, we are more than happy to do that. Get onto Patreon. The way I'm structuring my Patreon is I'm actually charging for my four main feature videos that I post per month. Uh, that is the, the videos like this. Now I'm not gonna charge for this video because I've already charged Patreon once, but uh, basically it will be one charge per week. So whatever you donate will be a weekly charge on Patreon. You are allowed to set a monthly maximum. So if you only wanna donate like $3 a month, just put a dollar in there and it'll charge you three times. And then the last time for the month, it won't charge you. Uh, I wish there was a little bit better method for doing this, but that's the best thing that I can kind of come up with. If you only wanna donate a dollar, put up a $1 max. That's perfectly fine. The more of you that do that, the better off I can be. And again, nothing from my Patreon is going directly into my pocket to pay for my housing or my food or it might buy me some beer for the show. But uh, every dollar that I make on Patreon is going directly back into the show. Everything you see behind me, everything that's sitting in front of me, anything that I need to produce the show or any content, that is where that Patreon money is going. It's going to help support this channel directly. So please donate, guys. I really appreciate it. Same deal with my Amazon affiliate link. Follow that link down below. Every dollar I make on that goes right back into supporting the channel in the exact same way. So thank you guys for watching this video. I'm gonna watch my PowerShell script finish uh, restoring all of my files up to my FreeNAS server and hopefully get that up and running. Uh, my next tutorial is likely gonna be the whole home ad blocking. So stay tuned for that one here in the next couple of days. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Cheers.